Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Online Farm Second Quarter 2016 Investor Conference Webinar. Online Farm has been working at full speed also during second quarter, and as public information shows, acquired yet another company, elected new council and board members, and reached another sales record. To tell us more about these and other things, we have our host, management board member of Online Farm, Salve Slapinch, with us. As for agenda of the webinar, as always, we will start with company's presentation, after which Salve Slapinch will answer all your questions. To ask a question to Mr. Lapinch, please use the question box on the right side of your screen. Salvi, I invite you to start the presentation. Uh, thank you, Eva. Good uh, afternoon, everyone. Yes, indeed, uh, since our last webinar, a number of things have happened. And I uh, actually have dedicated uh, basically a section of this webinar to whatever has happened since, since we last uh, spoke. Um, and also, uh, he was right, uh, numbers, numbers are good, sales are growing, a um, new acquisition has just been announced, but uh, let us go through the whole thing just one by one. So the second quarter alone, in terms of sales, uh, yes, that's a new record. It's more than 27 million euros. Uh, you see we are 18% uh, bigger sales than in Q2 of, uh, of last year. Uh, you see in this chart quite nicely that uh, it's the best quarter in our corporate history. About 1.6 um, um, million uh, euros uh, were added, uh, were made in, in, uh, were added by pharmacies, uh, about 1.1 million by Silvanos, about 0.8 for the first time ever uh, to our quarterly sales were added by a company called Thomas Ellis that we just acquired uh, at the very end of uh, Q2 of this year. Um, if you look at profits, um, they do not look as good uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, now, preliminarily, we are talking about roughly 3 million euros in profits, which still is an increase by about 15% compared to last year. Um, this, year this quarter, too, it's been influenced by provisions, as we promised uh, in the beginning of the year that we will seriously provide for our Ukrainian receivables and we are planning to do so uh, for about 1 million euros every quarter. So that's just what we did. On top of that we also added, let's say we, we recreated provisions for uh, one of Russian wholesalers called Oriola. Initially we created those provisions uh, slightly more than a year ago. Uh, then we thought we reached some agreement with them uh, and um, reversed those provisions, but now we see that the agreement that we have reached uh, is not actually working out and uh, to the scale we expected it to. Uh, so we again created them uh, partially back, so we reversed 50% uh, of that back. So uh, all in all, uh, Q2 of this year we made new provisions of uh, 1.5 uh, million euros. Uh, we had uh, some uh, positive impact from Forex. Uh, also, uh, what has happened is that we have brought our depreciation uh, rates closer to reality for some pieces of equipment, and that has roughly added something like 300,000 uh, to our um, uh, to our net profits. Uh, so this, these are the different factors influencing it. Uh, the main negative factor is the, indeed has been the fact that we have been selling uh, more uh, of a uh, product with lower margin and less of products with, with higher margin. Uh, in other words, you will see that later uh, that we have sold more of a chemical products and less of a sort of promotable products, the ones that have generally didn't have big margin. So that had, had uh, an adverse impact to our profits for this quarter. Uh, and this has also, of course, reflected itself in EBITDA. If you look at uh, the first half, uh, our EBITDA is at 9.7 million in six months, at reasonably low margin of 18.2. Uh, 12 month rolling, it's still the good impacts of last year are effective. Uh, and we see uh, 12 month EBITDA at 22 million euros, roughly 22% margin. 
And uh, uh, here again, it's, it's, it's a product next that, that's influencing things. Uh, you know, sales of pharmacies are growing. Um, as you know, the, the margins in pharmacies are not as, as, as high as they are uh, with the main production of pharmaceuticals. So that has all uh, pushed the uh, all sorts of margins, including EBITDA margins, uh, down. If you look at sales by country during Q2 alone, you see that uh, Russia's share is back 36%. It's again the number one market, which was not the case for Q1 of, of this year. Uh, sales to Russia have improved, and uh, in, uh, you can especially see that on, on a separate pie chart for Q2. Uh, so Latvia is no longer uh, the, the, the biggest market of ours. It's down to 22% from 24 uh, Ukraine is uh, quite nice at uh, 15%. Uh, Netherlands have disappeared from top 10, uh, but still significant volumes of, of paraminosolisic acid are sold. Uh, and let me remind you that this is a product that we ship to the World Health Organization via their distribution channels in the Netherlands. Now, uh, many of those uh, products have been still shipped within a program of WHO, but they have been technically shipped to recipient countries, uh, including Ukraine. So uh, you'll see that we still have a reasonable amount of pasta salt, but uh, don't have Netherlands in our uh, in our country chart. So here we are. Uh, here is the product pie chart. You see we have pasta at six percent here, pretty much confirming uh, confirming uh, what I said. Uh, there hasn't been any major uh, changes uh, in our split of pie charts. Um, Nermidin is again is, is, is clearly a leader, has recovered some of what it lost in Q1 this year. Uh, the main change really is that PASA is down from 12% at this time last year to 6% today. And that share is now distributed primarily to Nufen, uh, which is up to 15% of health, and Pencarol, which also has gained some 3 percentage points. Um, if you look at six months in total, our sales are at 53.5 million or 53.5% of our target for this year, which uh, is going to uh, was 100 million. It's increased by 7%, 7 mainly due to very successful Q2 in Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus, and, and partially Latvia as well. Again, you see in this chart that these are the best six months in our history so far. Uh, pharmacies have added 4.4 um, to this. Um, to this sales, and uh, that's a net sales after consolidation correction. Uh, but uh, totally, they sold products worth more than 9 million euros. Silvanos uh, has added 2, point, uh, 2 million uh, here, and uh, about um, 2.3 uh, with the total sales. Uh, total sales, I mean, else we don't have any mutual sales with them, and they have added about 800,000. Uh, to uh, sales here. Situation with Tonus will change as, as, as uh, for those of you who have uh, read our uh, management report for Q2, uh, Q2 report. Uh, those may know that we have just created a company in Russia. But so far we have no mutual transactions with Tonus sellers at all. Uh, now Oil Farm has created a drone company in Russia and is planned to channel uh, Tonus sellers to Russian sales. Uh, via our daughter company in, in Russia. So that will, uh, we expect that will boost the Russian sales nicely. And also we will, of course, uh, it will require some consolidation corrections since there will be mutual transactions between one farm's daughter company uh, in Russia and Tom's Ellis. Now, if you look at the profit of six months, <clears throat> it's uh, according to report, it's about, about 6.1 million euros. And during these six months, we have made equations uh, uh, for more than uh, two and a half million euros, uh, primarily for uh, for Ukrainian receivables of about two million and a half million for Russian receivables, and some minor uh, some minor write-offs in, in, in um, as far as uh, our, our, our stock is concerned, but that's really too too small to focus on. Uh, two more million euros we do expect to be made as as provisions for Ukrainian. Receivables before the end of the year. Now, our uh, profit in, in six months in 2016 is dropped by about a third compared to when it was last year. Um, and, and this is pretty much in line with what 
what the, pro the profit targets were at the beginning of the year, still they meet 61% of our annual profit targets for 2016. We remind you that, that we only, uh, at the beginning of the year, uh, we only expected about 10 million euros of, of net profit for the company for 2016. Now, um, what has been, what were the main reasons for change here in terms of sales? Uh, let's have a look at 15 best-selling products of ours during the last six months. Uh, you see that uh, in monetary terms, and you can even see it visually, it's, it's Nufa, the second best-selling That one alone has added 1.15 million uh, to our sales uh, improvement. Adaptol, number three product of ours, has added 0.7 million. And Etetazine, which is number five product of ours, has, has added uh, another half million to our sales. And of course, you see it quite nicely that in terms of, of money, the biggest loss has been PASA. Uh, we, we lost about 42% of that product for 2.3 million. Nermedin, the leading product, lost another 600,000, but this is improvement compared to what it was in Q1. Uh, the, the, the drop in terms of percentages was much bigger, so Nermedin is catching up a little. And then all others combined uh, have subtracted uh, 180,000 from our sales. In terms of percentages, we have some shooting stars. Uh, we have uh, uh, adamantane hydrochloride, which has grown by 346%. Uh, we have one chlorine 3.5 dimeta adamantane. Please write it down. Uh, that one added 99% uh, to our sales compared to what we added last year. And Foragin, which is uh, about number 10, top 10 of our product, that, that added uh, 66%. Uh, and yes, uh, furodenine, another natural furodenine, has lost a bit, 13%, and monoxyl glucose, another chemical product of ours, that, uh, that lost 8%. If you look at countries, uh, again, uh, 10 out of top 15 countries are growing. Uh, the, since this is um, our first half, we still see Russia falling. If that was like Q2 alone, we would see Russia improving. Uh, for those of you who remember Simochar for Q1, remember that Russia was uh, uh, much more lagging behind compared to last year in Q1 than it is now. Uh, again, in monetary terms, Ukraine has saved the day by adding 2.5 million euros. But uh, please be reminded that large part of that is parameters of acid, acid, which was uh, also shipped to Ukraine in this uh, this um, six months. Uh, and uh, Latvia has added 1.4 million, and Belarus, uh, performing very nicely so far, has added 1.3 million. Uh, Belarus has indeed, indeed been, been a good surprise for this, uh, this uh, six months, uh, but there are different signals that uh, that might change. Uh, because of uh, different different uh, activities that uh, and some sort of semi protectionist measures that that might be taken by this country. Uh, in terms of um, in relative terms, in terms of percentages, the biggest growers are Italy, one hundred and ninety four percent. Uzbekistan, which is reasonably a big market for ours, uh, has added one hundred and thirty four percent, and uh, Poland has added fifty seven percent. Uh, to the growth. Now, in terms of loss, of course, it's Netherlands. That's where PASA was, was shipped to, and we, uh, we lost uh, 3.5 million there. Uh, Russia is lagging behind for 1.3 million, and Tajikistan is lagging behind uh, 280,000. Now, two countries uh, in terms of percentages that are underperforming uh, at most are Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan, and, and those, uh, those ones have been heavily uh, dependent on Russia for its uh, for its labor. I mean, have been sending uh, its labor to Russia. Have been depending on uh, what uh, what Tajikis and Kyrgyzis are sending back from from their employments in Russia. So obviously, uh, that we know that has hit their economies uh, significantly. And fortunately, this has also um, been reflected uh, in our sales to these countries. So recent events, um, well, first of all, we had an extraordinary general, general meeting in August 16, uh, where we, uh, yeah, it was announced for August 16, uh, where we planned to uh, amend our Articles of Association a little, whereby uh, seven board members, uh, 
is a new number of board members, so it's increased by two. And uh, an audit committee, according to a previous version of articles, was to be elected um, once every year. Now we extended that two-year period. Also, we did some changes. Uh, basically, re-elected the, the council, whereby we replaced uh, or the chairwoman, well, we replaced um, uh, the uh, two. Um, for uh, council members, Mr. Vladimir Krivozulov and Ingrida Tsirtsina, we replaced them with Mr. Rivers Gulat Melis and Gilia Gildeva. But um, since I already covered our financials for Q2 and uh, six months, uh, maybe I could ask Eva to come up with both questions. Uh, we sort of are a, a little, a little uh, missed those. Uh, so please uh, take your few minutes um, and. Um, uh, this question is, is a typical question that, that I ask uh, about um, uh, Q1 numbers, uh, in this case Q2 numbers or, or six-month numbers. Do you think they are what you expected? Do you think maybe they are better than you expected or, or, or they're worse than you expected? Please take a few seconds and um, uh, choose your, uh, choose your, uh, your answer. Uh, do you how do you view them? And um, uh, yeah, I think now we can move to our next question, next uh, slide. Uh, another thing, uh, after announcing uh, uh, an AGM, uh, we went on a nice trip to uh, New York. And uh, on August the 1st, we had an honor to participate in the closing bell ceremony at NASDAQ market, state, uh, market site in Times Square, New York. Uh, here we have uh, some pictures of, of that event. Uh, we are really proud that we were the first Latvian company uh, doing that and uh, the third Latvian entity to do that. Uh, you may remember that we were awarded this honor as the best performing Latvian company in 10 years in combined uh, you know, valuation of our share price increase and uh, investor relations improvement. And let me take this opportunity to thank all the investor an analyst community that has been around us for these 10 years. Uh, if, uh, if it was not your appreciation, among other things, uh, then we certainly wouldn't be, wouldn't be able to uh, go there and wouldn't be awarded uh, this, uh, this great honor. Now, um, when we returned back, it was a, a general meeting time. And uh, we uh, in, uh, re elected the council. Um, basically, five out of um, five out of uh, uh, three out of five uh, council members remain the same. And there are two new council members selected. Uh, one of them is is very well known uh, a person and in, uh, in Latvia and the Baltics. That's Mr. Ivars Gudmanis. Uh, among uh, many things, he is a former two times former Latvian prime minister. He has been Latvian prime minister in uh, back in. Uh, 1991, and all the very, very, very difficult times this country has experienced. Uh, it was a uh, uh, prime minister in 2008-2009, um, uh, I guess, which also were not necessarily the um, best times uh, of the country. So uh, uh, he, he is uh, uh, he is a well-known uh, politician, uh, very uh, knowledgeable about many things. So we believe he could he could add a lot of lot of uh, expertise, a lot of strategic knowledge uh, to the company. And another new member is Miss Gilia Gildeva. She is, uh, in short words, she is really a uh, uh, one of the pharma uh, opinion leaders in Russia. Uh, professor in Moscow Medical Academy, has a PhD in virology. She is a member of Russian National Pharmaceutical Chamber. Uh, she's a leading partner of some of the Russian scientific uh, institutions. Uh, so from uh, our sort of uh, pharma perspective, uh, I think this is, a, this is a very good addition to our council. Uh, later on, the new council elected uh, two new board members. Uh, both of them have been with the company uh, for quite some time. Mr. Mikhail Schreinbergs is a, is a chief in information officer at, with the company. He has more than 17 years of experience in IT and communications. He joined the team in 2016. Uh, previously, he was with Rigas Svarvon Bovis uh, He has a master's degree in engineering. Um, he has a degree of British uh, Open University. 
And the CFO, Mr. Martin Steinbach, was also an uh, elected a new uh, board member of the company. He has uh, spent more than 15 years in finance and accounting. He joined us in 2013, leaving his previous position in Ernst & Baltic, when he was an outsourcing director. He is a member of ACCA since 2006. So I guess uh, before we move to uh, our new acquisition story, I think it's uh, it's time for next uh, next poll. Yeah, could, uh, I think it was related to council. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I mean, especially Mr. Goldman is I think is well known in, in very many people around here. So uh, curious of what is your opinion about that particular development and, and Ms. David too. Please um, take uh, take take your time to vote. And uh, then we'll proceed to um, um, with a short uh, short view of uh, what our recent uh, recently announced acquisition was. Um, yep. Um, Right. Yeah. So we're back. Um, yes. Uh, just a few days. A few days ago, we announced uh, that we have acquired 24% shares in Belarusian company called NPK Bi uh, Biotest or Biotest, as they call it. Now, um, we we expect that shortly, uh, whenever Belarusian authorities uh, approve it, uh, we will have another 46% registered on us, meaning that eventually we will own 70% of a company. Uh, we have agreed to pay 2.6 million euros uh, for 70%. Uh, sales of that company, uh, the company basically is a uh, packaging company for um, for herbal teas, powders, and mixtures, and also has four uh, pharmacies in uh, in the city of Rodna, which is the very best in Belarus. Uh, and uh, the, the the reason, the main reason behind the acquisition, really, is that this company now is in process or basically has completed uh, the construction of new uh, production site and has just enough space for us to locate a, a packaging unit there uh, meaning that since I've been telling this uh, quite a few times that we see some uh, semi-protectionist protectionist trends in, in, in Belarus and uh, uh, Belarus authorities are urging all sorts of um, foreign producers to place at least some part of the production in Belarus uh, and that, that opens lots of, uh, of doors and, and opens uh, uh, new opportunities um, in Belarusian market. Uh, so uh, the main reason therefore is not, not, not because we are terribly excited about the, the, the current uh, products of a company which, which are still nice and they still make nice sales out of them. Uh, but the main reason really is that we see this as a, as a base uh, for, uh, for some very last stages of our production in Belarus. Uh, so that, that will, therefore we will be treated in, in several cases like Belarusian producer and that will give us certain competitive advantage compared to, to other, um, other uh, companies in, in Belarus or at very, very, very least it will uh, help us to at least keep uh, the volumes of sales that we have in Belarus. And you know that in, in, in Belarus we basically are talking about you know, normally between 7 and 8 million euros per annum. So if at least manage to keep that uh, uh, that share uh, with, with the current margins, that's, that's already a good uh, development. Uh, yeah, and uh, uh, among other news, and um, that's more of an IR, Investor Relations Development. Uh, we just launched the analyst section of the webpage. We are so far aware of only two analysts covering us, and uh, one of them, uh, is, I can see, is, has joined this webinar. Uh, very warm welcome to you, Mr. Jonas Jost. Um, and we also know uh, of Mr. Andrei Radionov from Swedbank uh, in Lithuania. Uh, is doing coverages on oil and farm. Um, in case uh, you know or you are uh, also doing analysis of our company covering us and, uh, and you're not on the list, please please contact uh, 
conduct, conduct me. Uh, we will expand the list. Uh, maybe if we add you know, two or three more analysts, uh, then they could create another section that will have some sort of consensus forecast, consensus prices, uh, and uh, consensus advice. Um, and thus, uh, you know, reach higher and higher uh, IR standards, uh, the ones that are sort of best best standards in 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 the in the region. Um, so yeah, if, if if you're interested or you are covering and we don't know about that, uh, please let us know. For all the others, uh, these are the contacts that if if you are thinking of investing in oil farm but you want to have an independent view, uh, these are the contacts uh, to contact. Uh, I think these both gentlemen will be more than happy. Help, um, but that's something you have to talk to them. Uh, at least you will have uh, you now have no now you know where to where to turn to for an um, uh, for uh, an independent uh, independent uh, view of, of the company. Uh, yeah, and before we move to the in focus uh, session, um, I have uh, two more questions uh, prepared for you, uh, and those both of them are. Right now relating to our dollar companies uh, and uh, therefore uh, you know, could you please uh, post the first one of them thank you yeah so um, it's been quite a while since we have been doing doing acquisitions uh, basically up until recent acquisition they've all been in in Latvia, uh, but uh, and and, and uh, well, we like most of the things we acquire. Uh, we see uh, certain certain uh, um, you know, good promising future in them. But maybe that's just us. Maybe maybe your uh, opinion is different. Maybe you think that's that's uh, not as great. Uh, maybe you think we should focus purely on organic growth, or maybe we should pay everything out in dividends. So this is uh, how you say now. Um, it's really interesting to see what you think. Maybe we have too a little bit too carried away uh, with this. Um, but um, yeah, thank you. Uh, now um, you know we, we do publish. We do publish our quarterly reports. We do publish our. Um, oh, excuse me. How do I go back? Yeah. Uh, we do publish our quarterly reports. Uh, we do publish monthly reports, and um, you see the consolidated data. You see segmentation, uh, but uh, you don't really see particular companies, uh, you know, behind it. And uh, yeah, so therefore, therefore, we uh, decided to have uh, to present you a standalone, totally standalone, uh, key financials of four uh, key dollar companies of ours. And those are here. You see Kiwi Cosmetics, Tonus Ellis, Latvia, Sapphire, and Sivonos. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's start with our um, latest acquisition, which we are consolidating in, and that's Tonus Ellis. Uh, so, what we will have here for Tonus and for all the other companies is uh, the, uh, you know, six month report or, or balance sheet on uh, June the 30th. Uh, all numbers are in thousands of euros. Uh, of course, this uh, presentation will remain on our website and and uh, Nasdaq's website. If you want to have a, a closer look later on. Anyway, so this uh, this is the sort of balance sheet of Taurus Elast. You will see the total total um, assets are uh, slightly above seven million euros. And if you look at their uh, if your P and L for uh, six months of this year. You see the uh, after-tax profit is 1.2 million euros, and if we annualize that, that's a very simple way I did it. It's just multiplied it by two to have ROA and ROE um, calculation easier. Um, so EBITDA six months is 1.5 million euros for this company. Gross profit margin is 47%, EBITDA margin being 41%, net margin being very high, 32%. So uh, if, if, however, uh, you don't really see any major selling expense in Tolas Tolas Elast case. That's something that might change, as you know. We are we are we are those uh, marketing freaks, uh, and we will we'll, we'll try to invest a lot more so the company has has higher sales. So the net margin eventually, 
as a market might might shrink, but we really much expect that the profits uh, will 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 grow for the company. So uh, return on assets, therefore, is about sixteen percent of uh, percent and, uh, per annum, and return on investment on equity is uh, twenty two uh, percent per annum, uh, given these calculations. So the previous uh, yeah, another uh, acquisition here was Sonos. Uh, yeah, and um, uh, same story here. It's uh, June the thirtieth, uh, thousands of euros. So here you see uh, total balance slightly more than two uh, uh, two million euros, and about uh, almost two and a half million euros. Uh, almost half of that is equity. Uh, and you look at PNL for six months. They already made one hundred eighty thousand euros here. And here you see a different picture, of course. Here you see the selling expense is huge, right? I mean, EBITDA is, is 235,000 per annum. Uh, gross profit margin is impressive, 49%. But then when we move down to EBITDA, it's 11%. So you see the, the, the selling expense here really uh, consumes a lot of, of the numbers. Uh, and net margin is 8%. Uh, so if you analyze the profit, uh, we'll see uh, ROA of 15% and ROE of 32%, still reasonably impressive. Now, our smallest dot company that we do consolidate, and let me remind you that it was only, uh, I believe, January or, or February we uh, acquired the company. Uh, at that time, the, company, the company's last year's entire year's sales was 123,000 euros, um, and it, it, it was, it was loss-making. Uh, now, uh, yeah, this is the balance sheet. I mean, they were talking about assets worth 156,000 euros only, uh, and uh, liquidity is only 23,000. And this is how they have been performing during six months of this year. So, only six months they sell uh, 100,000 euros, almost as much as the entire year last year. They're still in loss. They still have about 6,000 uh, euros loss in, in uh, six months. And um, but they have extremely nice gross profit margin of 70%. Uh, and here again, you see that selling expense for that size of company is huge. So uh, yeah, so we need to boost the sales. We need to launch the economies of scale and production. And then this company is also going to turn profitable, and we believe this is going to happen very soon. So they have, of course, therefore, gross profit margin, as you see, is very nice and very positive, but starting with EBITDA and going down, it, it turns negative, and therefore all the, all the returns, of course, um, also are negative. Now, the oldest daughter of ours is Latvia Sabteka, and, uh, yeah, you see that their balance sheet is uh, about 5.6, uh, almost 5.7 uh, million euros. If you look at their PNL here, you see that they sold nine, more than nine million worth of products. So um, you see their profit. That's a totally different business. That's a retail business, and uh, the, therefore the gross profit margin is is uh, reasonably uh, low compared to all the sisters, uh, twenty six percent. And uh, yeah, uh, you see the the six uh, percent EBITDA margin and the margin of four percent. Uh, thing is that, uh, and you don't see it here, since it's a lot that uh, Latvia Saptek is buying uh, from Oilen Farm as a wholesaling company. It does generate the uh, income for the my company's uh, wholesale business. Uh, so, uh, therefore, we believe that these two businesses combined, of course, net margin is somewhat higher. Uh, our estimates show it nearly uh, closer to the, the, the margin of 7 or 8%. Uh, initially, we planned 10%. We are moving in that direction, but still still uh, have not reached it. Um, if I remember correctly, for the whole year last year, Latvia Saptek made a profit of 400,000 uh, euros. So in terms of profitability, they have already uh, already reached that in the uh, same amount in, 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 in uh, six months. Now, since the company is uh, reasonably, uh, say, uh, undercapitalized, we are talking about uh, share capital of only 16 and an equity of only 1.7. Um, yeah, it's of course return on equity is uh, is reasonably high. So, uh, short summary of of, um, of of key margins and, and ratios is here. 
So uh, different types of companies, uh, different approach to uh, different costs, uh, increased selling costs, you know, different margins at different levels. Um, but main thing is all, all things are all companies are quite profitable, and uh, we believe that Kiwi Cosmetics is is an exception only for a short period of time. So um, I think that was helpful. Uh, also, I'm not sure if Mr. Taiwo Silas has joined us for this webinar. Uh, let me thank him for ideas for what could be in focus next year in the, for next webinar. Uh, I won't disclose that, but I like the idea, and it certainly will be less, a lot less analytical, a uh, lot uh, less numbers involved. So I hope that you will uh, enjoy that too. But that takes a lot more preparation. Uh, anyway, we keep that in secret till next time. Uh, but now I think it's uh, it's time for Q and A session. Uh, you up, please? Yes, yeah, so, uh, would you like to start with the last poll question that we had about acquisitions? Right, yeah, thanks for reminding me. I have one more poll question, and that's the right, right exact time is now, because that uh, is a question of what do you think of our key, our biggest uh, dollar companies. So what do you think is our best acquisition so far? Uh, you know, we have some insight in, uh, in four companies that, uh, that that went through. Uh, you know, you may have used the products, you may have liked some of the products or hated some of the products. So whatever your attitude is, for whatever reason, please uh, feel free to express it. And uh, right after that, uh, right after that, we will start with uh, the Q and A session. Uh, all right, I see that eighty-nine percent of uh, people have submitted their answers. Uh, I'll leave the poll question up running uh, if someone else wants to join. Uh, but meanwhile, let's proceed with the questions and answers session then. Uh, so the first question in line, uh, are there any acquisitions plans in Western Europe? Salvi? Uh, the short answer is yes. Uh, uh, there, there are acquisitions planned. Uh, and. Uh, there are some um, activity, but uh, this is very, very early stage. And uh, my sort of uh, my forecast on this is that uh, there won't be any meaningful news in this respect coming out sooner than eight, nine months or so. Uh, so yes, there are. No, it's not going to be soon. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Who will own the remaining 30% in Biotest? Oh, um, it's, uh, it's, it's a management. Uh, it's management and one of the wholesale, uh, Belarusian wholesaling companies. Uh, but depending on, uh, depending on how successful we see this, this investment, uh, we, we have an option, uh, basically, for the remaining 30%. Uh, but, but at the moment, it's it's uh, it's uh, management of, of the company and, and one Belarusian wholesaling company. Yeah. Thank you. Packaging base. Does it mean that products as such will be still produced in Latvia and packaged only in Belarus? Yes, exactly. Uh, now, uh, the way currently the plan stands is that the the the, the pills will be produced um, in Latvia. Up with chemicals. I mean, chemicals will be synthesized in Latvia. The pills will be pressed in Latvia. The pills will be melted in blisters in Latvia, and then blisters will be shipped to Belarus. And in Belarus, they will be put in a package, and the leaflet will be put in as well. Uh, and uh, from there, it it uh, it uh, will be sold on to Belarusian uh, wholesalers. And uh, for uh, it. it it doesn't mean that this product totally becomes Belarusian. It still may have difficulties qualifying for uh, for some of the uh, Belarusian state purchases. But as far as limitations in pharmacies are concerned, and Belarusian pharmacies are required to keep a certain percentage of Belarus made products. Uh, so as far as that is concerned, that uh, this approach um, certainly uh, solves that issue. Yeah. Uh, so, so I have a follow-up question. Will it allow Olam Farm to produce with lower costs? 
Um, not really. I mean, yes, the labor costs in Belarus are, are uh, of course, um, smaller than they are in Latvia, especially talking about Ola and we are really, uh, you can say, suburb of Riga. So we have a lot of Riga influence uh, also in terms of labor cost. And, and Hrodna is, of course, not suburb of Minsk. It's really, uh, by Belarusian standards, is a, is a medium, medium size, medium to large size, size town. Um, but since the volumes, at least initially, are not going to be huge, uh, I would say that whatever gains we will have from labor cost will be most likely uh, eaten uh, by, uh, you know, uh, depreciation rates and things like that, because investment is reasonably big. Um, but if, if, if the more products we add to packaging, or the more partner products we add to packaging, that might eventually change. But again, uh, cost saving, <coughs> excuse me, Cost saving, saving in no way is the reason we decided to, to move to Belarus. It's really more of a preservation of a market and being local for Belarusian market. Even if it were, there were no cost savings, even if it was slightly more expensive than here, we would still give it a very serious consideration uh, just just for sake of, of uh, preserving that reasonably important market. Eva? Yeah. Thank you, Salve. Next question. You only reverted 0 0.5 million euros from Oriola. Does that mean that you have received the remaining 0 0.5 million euros from them? Uh, no, it means that... Um, so the longer story was that they owed us a million. Uh, then they uh, proposed us a system whereby they would partially pay us and partially, since since uh, the related party of theirs is, uh, has a reasonably big Russian uh, pharmacy retail chain. So they will partially pay us and they will partially um, um, cover it by services such as such as uh, promotion in their pharmacy uh, uh, papers and uh, well, placements in shelves and all those other marketing things that normally you pay for. Now, a uh, certain amount of time is, has passed since we agreed on that. And we, what we see is that they are way behind the schedule uh, in both in, in payments and in, in the provision of social services. So uh, to be on the safe side, we decided, okay, let's let's see how things develop, but uh, let's let's provide for half of this. Um, yeah. Thank you, Sal. Uh, next question in line. Is the pricing for acquiring the last 30% in NPK biotest similar to the acquisition price of the 70% shares? Yes, it is. I mean, the option that we has is, is uh, per share basis, uh, the price is the same. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, some no, other no, questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Re regarding PASA or PASA, do you expect the lower level of sales to be permanent? Um, yes, we do. Um, we, you know, this this is a question uh, really more to epidemiologists or whatever you call them. Uh, it, it of course really depends on how tuberculosis behaves worldwide. Uh, but the trend that we see is that uh, it might be difficult for us to achieve levels of sales we had for that product in 2014 and 15. Uh, and of course, uh, um, PASA is gradually, very, very gradually, but still, um, I wouldn't say phased out, but uh, let's say uh, doctors in different parts of the world are considering different alternatives, so we are. Uh, um, also looking at our possibilities to produce those alternatives. But PASA, uh, like I said, uh, unless there's significant tuberculosis outbreak or, or some other um, uh, similar disaster, I, I have difficulty seeing that product being on that high level since it was a few years ago. Yeah. All right. Regarding your recent new strategy of increasing production, at the local level in different countries. Can you give an idea of the overall margin impact versus your current practice of exporting from Latvia? Um, no, it's, well, I wouldn't call it a trend. This is really our very, very first exercise. 
and and like I said, uh, the reason really is not the margins, sort of purely regulatory. Uh, just just uh, a wish to to you know, preserve to keep that market. Uh, therefore, uh, margins, like I said, has have, have not been the reason. Uh, and and like I said, with, with these volumes, I mean, if we start to do separate packaging in in, in, in Ukraine or Russia or elsewhere, uh, with those volumes, the margins uh, probably do matter, uh, or certainly do matter. But 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 for for, for what we have in mind in Belarus, uh, like I said, they, they most likely will have some savings, but uh, they're not going to hugely impact our P&L. So the, the margin improvement is minimum, minimal. Yeah. Okay. Currently, last question in line. What should we expect from Russian Russian sales in the second half of the year? Oh, that's that's really anybody's guess. Uh, I mean, CIS well, CIS countries, Russia and, and, and Ukraine and Belarus have been surprising us a lot. And uh, in Q1, we thought that Russia is going to be reasonably good, and it wasn't. And and then Q2, it was surpassing our expectations, and then the Ukraine we thought it was going to be bad, but it's turning out quite good, and, and Belarus we thought uh, will be much much worse than it was. So it's 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 uh, it, it's really a gamble. Um, but I don't see any major either positive or negative impacts. But some sometimes these impacts are, uh, you know, depending on purely internal Russia. And, relationship between their wholesalers and some sort of very internal structural nuances that that sometimes we have no idea about. Um, so uh, for those I cannot comment at all, but, if, uh, but, but from sort of bigger, major uh, things, I, I don't see anything going either terribly optimistic way or terribly pessimistic. So let's say, well, We'll probably maintain the, the year end. We'll probably have uh, whole year sales level of last year. That would be my sort of most realistic uh, forecast for that. Uh, Eva? Thank you, Sal. At this point, we have managed to answer all submitted questions. Let's give uh, one more minute uh, to send in last questions for the participants in case they have any. Uh, meanwhile, I'll remind that uh, the recording of the webinar will soon be available in NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel and also in company's announcements. So those who are interested uh, to listen to Salvis once again, uh, please follow the news and get the recording from there. Um, as for, for uh, next webinar, Salvi, then we meet each other in yeah, it's three. Yeah. It's most likely um, well, first couple of weeks of December. Uh, yeah, and, and, and then we'll report on uh, Q3. Uh, I think we'll have more to say on bio tests. Uh, we will uh, have uh, moved there a lot faster. Uh, you know, uh, probably placed something already. Um, uh, we will have certainly will have some consolidation of it. Uh, in our reports, um, we'll see a lot of the company in Russia starting to sell Tornus's products, so that should add something to it. And, um, and maybe I'll have uh, have uh, to report, or well, depending on what your answers to poll questions was, because uh, I, I don't see them. Maybe we'll report on uh, some uh, some new acquisitions by that by that time. Wonderful, Salvi. Thanks for spending the last hour with us and for sharing Ma the news. My pleasure. Many thanks for joining. See you next time then. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and uh, see you next time. And you better think about uh, being an uh, analyst of Farm shares. We could together make a wonderful uh, investor relations site. Thank you.